being recorded. Well, nice to be here. Nice to see a couple people that I haven't seen for a while in the room. And some that I just saw the other day, but we were on a different continent. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of you, you might remember last August, I came back and I showed this slide. Africa, help let my people go out of America. Repent, sing, and bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Uh, actually, I believe I, I probably first produced this slide in July. And, um, and that led to going and developing so many more things developed. But some of the things that developed is we spoke forth some things over there. And sometimes when you speak forth the vision, sometimes it's many years. You know, we talked about a training base back in 1990, and we didn't really see the fullness of it happening to about 2004. Um, you know, we spoke in 2004 that we needed a training base in Israel, and it wasn't about until 2013 we started to see it really you know, although we had people going to bed Emmanuel almost immediately, you know, that we took the steps, which I think is, is really important anytime you cast a vision, is what little steps are you going to take right away. And so, but in August, we says, we're coming back and we're doing a sing together in Jinja, okay? We're going to have a choir that's going to end up in Canada uh, in 2019 uh, for the 400th anniversary of since black slavery came. But we went this week and uh, we saw a lot of this stuff already happening. That's what I call an acceleration of what's happening in this hour. This linkage that we had earlier in 218 about sing together and then connecting Africa with helping bring Jewish people home. If I was convicted before I left on this most recent trip to Uganda and with the, uh, the small team God gave us, I tell you, be careful now. It's it's like it's gone in deeper, um, and uh, it and it it's 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 one thing to be able to speak it as North Americans, but to hear Africans repeat it, and you know, over and over again, Africa help let my people go out of America. Um, this this aspect of God doing something globally that's bringing Africa and Israel and North America and it's touching the British Commonwealth and that's going to develop more this year. Um, it, it, it's just beyond comprehension. Um, let me start today by just allowing us to see Africa the way it is today. As you can see from a, a place of religion, it's almost half and half Muslim and Christian. Just to give you an understanding of that, in Uganda, you've never seen so many churches in all your life. They say, uh, and they told us countless times, that 70% of people go to church on sun, in Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, now just to compare that to Canada, less than 1%. You know, it's, it's, you're going into fractions of 1% who's in church in Canada or America. Uh, so, so the reality is there's a culture that this is what you do Sunday morning in Uganda. Uh, and then even uh, Pastor McDonald said it's, it's only 60%. That will be found in church in Malawi. Um, so there's a very strong culture, but it means that they're ready. They they want something deeper, uh, and, uh, and 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 so we were we were pleasantly delighted and blessed by the many divine appointments the Lord has given us and the team when we were there. Just to help remind some people is. Um, there was a declaration that was made in 2018 uh, prior to the 70th anniversary 
of independence for Israel. And that was President Rivlin said, let's sing together. President declared religious, secular, Arab, Jews, soldiers, women, men, children, let's put aside everything that divides us and do together what connects us and brings us together. It'll be fine. Oh, can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, we saw that as an opportunity to bring, sing together into Jewish communities in North America. And that led to a divine appointment with Doug Sadler with Seven Wells. Uh, that the fullness of this scripture, Zephaniah 3, 10 to 17, is coming to pass. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshipers, the daughter of my dispersed one, shall bring my offering. The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save you, will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. And uh, so excited this Saturday. Our choir is now in the country. Uh, and they'll be starting in Manitoba. It, it, it's amazing how it's come together so quickly. <laughs> you know, we asked a question uh, uh, earlier last year. Uh, we said in 2019, it's the 400th year since the first African slaves came upon American soil. Could singing and dancing African children amongst Christians and Jews in North America work towards helping six million Jews returning home to Israel. If I asked that a question last summer, um, in my heart and mind, it's a, it's a done deal. It will happen. We are helping to bring the Jews home in North America. This, this is gonna bring our Berlin Wall down, okay? Is singing African and dancing children uh, bringing Canadian and American Jews into their Jewish communities with the Jewish people. And God's going to use Africa to lead the way. Uh, it's part of a redemptive act that God's bringing to Africa. Uh, since they enslaved the Jews for 400 years, the children of Israel. Some of you aware that that was back at the time of Moses, in case we're some of us are <laughs> trying to understand that. Excuse me, I'm a little jet lag, so I'm gonna have to sort of finish my sentences and flow with me here. Uh, we, Marty, Shub, and I found ourselves on the Nile, which means river in Egyptian, I understand. Uh, and the river we sensed is the Gihon that's connected to. Um, the, yes. And you know, something that I struggled with is how does the Gihon connect it? It comes up in Jerusalem and it comes up as a source in Uganda because this river flows north. The other three rivers that come out of the Garden of Eden uh, flow in the opposite direction of this. So how does that work? And basically uh, looking up something else in Ecclesiastes, I got my answer on the first day I was in Uganda. Um, and you want to know what it is in Ecclesiastes yeah. chapter one? Uh, let me go to it right now. Just this is a side note, but I want you guys to see that God has science in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It Amen. says here, chapter one. Verse 4, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the where? Sea. The sea. Yet the sea is not full. You know, if it kept running in, you know, it, it should get filled up. Like, you just just turn your tap on in your sink, and something should get filled up, right? Mm -hmm. So where does that water go? It says here, to the place from which the rivers come. There they return again. So the bottom line is, we got a lot of underwater currents happening. Uh, so that was my answer. And so uh, that gave me freedom to know that I could go on the Nile, the Gihon, Again, and know that God won. You know, it was said, I think it may have been Marty, that if uh, the Garden of Eden center is in Jerusalem, 
for sure the ends of the garden, you know, at least are at the ends of the river that come from the beginning and the center of that garden. So which means we were at a gateway to the garden <laughs> in Uganda at the source of the Nile. Oh, can you get it? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's so God's word is so much fun. So anyway, we found ourselves dropping a couple stones, a Jerusalem stone, look-alike anyways, and a Nile stone down into the uh, uh, source. And they even told us that this place is, is basically known as the rock, okay? We had no idea. Uh, I guess there was a ripple effect after that happened. Intercessors all over Uganda began to hear about this. Others have been praying there for years. But this was like, it just happened. They've called something that only happens every thousand years on 1919, because the next 1919 is not going to be till 3019, okay, that... Um, that we would do uh, a sing together there. And we had every reason not to do it because there wasn't enough time. We were there in August. By December, we were hardly organized for it. Things had not come to pass, but God brought it together. Mm -hmm. And any of us that were there were witnesses of it. It was amazing. Zero point oh, yes. And for some who might not be aware, uh, we heard that story, 12 sheiks from Saudi Arabia came in, they gave a report of uh, losing the power that people could go to, to connect with darkness. Uh, those powers are gone, and they know it's the church that had its impact there. And that, and that could only be done when someone was given a directive to dress as a, in a burqa and to go on a synagogue on a particular day no, and a mosque. a mosque, pardon me, uh, and go in that mosque on a particular day. So to hear those stories, uh, it was amazing. And somebody saw it in writing and it was actually in English. And I'm hoping to get a copy of the loss that they have there at, um, at the source in Jinja. Anyway, we, we said that North America Ali is going to need some African-Egyptian prophetic intervention in 2019 for a holy return. And, and I, I'm here with the rest of the team that was there to say this is in motion, folks. Uh, those weren't mere words in last summer. There are actually many steps have been taken. And, and I want to say hundreds of people be mobilized in this. You know. If I talk, if I've been talking about Isaiah 18 from time to time, uh, ever since our buddy, um, um, how do I get rid of this guy? Okay, optimize. Okay, uh, optimize. How do I, no, it doesn't do that. Okay. Go up the side. Pardon me. Go up the side. It yeah, it'd be really nice if it could. Uh, And yeah. well, we're not going to worry about that right now. Whoops. L let me say this much. <clears throat> Isaiah 18, 1 to 3, it's like a GPS for the region that we're in. Woe to the land shadowed with buzzing wings. I mean, whether it's the tsetse fly or a mosquito, uh, most people die of malaria in this region uh, than HIV. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the biggest killers. Uh, so these winged pa uh, pests uh, are uh, still a struggle for Africa and anybody who visits it there, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, this is, which sends ambassadors by sea. They do, the Nile River's right there. Even in vessels of reed on the water saying, go swift messengers to a, a nation tall and smooth of skin. You know, I had a little girl on the first day that was picking at the hair of my arm. You know, I never quite remember anybody picking at the arm, at my hair on my arms. By Canadian standards, it's not like I have a lot of hair on my arms, okay? Uh, and I can't even remember my kids picking the hair at my arms. But the truth of the matter is they were fascinated by the hair of my arms. Why? 
they don't have hair on their arms. And if they do, it's an exception uh, in, in this region of Africa. Uh, the, the truth of the matter, look at they don't have eyebrows. If they wanna have eyebrows, they have to use these black pencils to put it there, uh, to, 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 put, to put it on. It's, it's like, and so when you tell people they're in the Bible, and this is where you go to, it, it's absolutely amazing. Um, when, 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 when they can see it, it's there. Uh, so go swift messengers to a nation, tall and smooth as skin to a people, terrible from the beginning onward. There's some scriptures that say of strange speech. You should hear the amount of dialects, you know, in Kampala alone. It, you know, it's amazing. Uh, wh whose land the rivers divide, all inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth are going to see what God wants to do. When he lifts up a banner on the mountains, you see it. When he blows a trumpet, you hear it. And it leads to pr people bringing their gifts to Zion. This is leading to people blessing Israel. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, and, and it was like after that child was pulled in the hair on my arms, it was like Jesus himself was pulling the hairs. You know, it was like, what is the message that's trying that, you know, then I went to my buddy, Cosmos, you see that? Yeah, look at look how much hair is up there. There's not okay. You know, I feel his arms. It's just the just food. Yeah, no, no, some did. Hun. Some pulled up the mustache. So anyway, we had three mandates while we were there. <clears throat> Number one was to do our sing together, and you know, I'm happy to say it was an amazing success. Uh, the, the fact that the Jewish agencies lead in the department that we're working with uh, at our Epicac Canaret, he came, he brought with him uh, some exceptional uh, little books, booklets here, um, which is Paquette Canaret, which is our, our little menu item of the things that we're doing there, including the Jordan Valley. So excited uh, to have this, to be able to present. Uh, represents a lot of months' work. The guys with the cameras. Yeah, you, I'm going to talk to you about uh, I'm hoping, Joe, you've got some people that are coming on. You can move some of that stuff off the screen. That would be appreciated. Uh, <clears throat> so, anyways, uh, we had uh, Daniel Yehuda. You can see him right here an Orthodox Jewish young man that came ready to lead uh, the dancing and the singing near Lahav, came representing the Jewish agency. And Daniel was able to get um, 84 Ugandan Jews to come to this event. Wow. They had to celebrate Shabbat there. Uh, so we had a sing together in Uganda, Jews and Christians singing together. Awesome. Uh, right after they did their Havdalah, right in front of the stage, right down at the river. It was really something else. The video should be ready here by Sunday, I understand. It was, it was amazing. That was our number one mandate. They built a conference around it. And, and I'll tell you, I, at one particular time, I had one bishop with a thousand churches, another with a couple hundred churches, and another with 67 churches, all wanting to talk to me at the same time. You know, it was like, this is crazy. Like we had favor, favor, favor. And we even had a favor on our team from Kenya. Okay. Uh, the, and it was just like there was, you know, such a willingness to work with us beyond today. This past 12 days that we were there. It was like, it was pinch me time for this work in this ministry. Um, and. The conference went well, and they brought some of their leaders in their country there. Uh, Dr. Laban spoke, uh, uh, Pastor David, who wrote the book about the 10 plagues there. I mean, they really backed up uh, a lot of what we were doing there. It was, it, it was, it was just outstanding. That was our number one mandate was the sing together. And that would have been enough. However, we had another mandate going there. And that was, is that we were meeting with 
Dr. John Melindy, very successful ministry internationally, uh, certainly in Israel. And that he has Prayer Mountain, you know, uh, where people have set up houses, the German house, that's the Kenyan house, the Israel house, all over this mountain. But most of the people are praying in the woods from many different countries. And they're, they're on a 40-day fast while we were there. And it was a real privilege for Marty and I to speak. Uh, on Monday night there, and uh, our mandate was, hey, you've got Prayer Mountain, let's do Prayer Valley at the other end of the Rift Valley, and uh, that meeting was so successful, thankfully Nir was there, that he's sending his personal assistant, he's sending his brother, and he's sending his son Gideon, uh, uh, and they're going to be in Israel with Marty and I in February, and we're going to talk about how we can, in fact, do Prayer Valley. Uh, Jordan Valley. They know how to do it. They know how to facilitate the people when they come and they go down to the river and pray. We're going to have literally thousands of people, especially from Africa, but they're just going to start the future of the Galilee of the nations, bringing many nations to be praying in the valley. So uh, I'm, I'm excited that this mandate, if it was living before we went, it's, it's well alive today. Our other mandate is we've been training the choir since August. Uh, Amon uh, from Rwanda uh, has been the African choir director working with Seven Wilds director Doug Sattler, who's the Canadian choir director. And uh, this choir was amazing, can I say with a capital A. Uh, even the Africans who know the drums, who know the songs, they were just so impressed uh, with them. And what was the difference? Is they were doing it in Hebrew. Because we're going to synagogues, we want to do Hebrew songs. And they had it in an African groove. Did you bring that? Uh... Oh, you don't have it right now? Oh, I was hoping to have it today. Uh, is it hard to have it for today? Okay, give it to Joe and he'll, he'll put it on. Um, um, I know it's easier for you to airdrop it. You don't have a memory stick. The, o the only thing is I have to then come out of what I'm doing here. He can put it on right away. Anyway, uh, before today is out, we'll try and get you to, to, to hear a little bit of the sound. I think the exciting thing is, is we, they were supposed to come to Canada a couple of days earlier. We extended their stay so they can come on 1919 and then ultimately be prayed for by all the bishops, all the pastors that would be there from all parts of Africa. But something else happened. You see, on the, the first day that we came to uh, uh, the guest house in Kampala, Pastor Steve was there. You see him on the bottom corner? Uh, he bumped into us getting our haircuts, and me and Marty, and uh, he says, oh, the ginger thing, I know about that. Well, we convinced him to be there, to be there. We didn't realize he was also a madman. The guy was used to eat grass and lizards when he could escape from the psycho ward for 28 years. He got a complete deliverance, became a pastor and a bishop. Now he's the prime minister for a king representing 2 million people for the Royal Highness of Ikubania, King of Bugueri, Royal Kingdom. So he, when he heard we were going down there doing the 1919 thing, he, he called the king and said, you need to be there too. That what makes this king unique is he's a preacher and he's a born again king, okay? He changed his schedule. He ended up in uh, um, Bali in the morning, I think Kampel in the afternoon, and came back to be here by noon with us. And uh, it was just an amazing thing for him to uh, to be Which one's the king? The king is right here, okay? And uh, right next to him is the bishop translating for him. Uh, but it was a divine appointment with Pastor Stephen, and he led His Royal Highness, uh, the King of Bugueri Royal Kingdom, Bishop John uh, Christom Waberi, uh, uh, doing the blessing and praying over the children's choir. So they were sent out by both the authorities in the, uh, uh, the kingdom of the region that we were in 
and the um, church. Unbelievable. Okay, I got to tell you. Uh, Praise the Lord. But anyway, I would make a presentation to them. And thankfully, uh, Teresa brought a Canadian Magan David that I was able to present. Would you like to see it? Okay, here we can show it to you just a second here. Um, I want to share something. It is. Okay, I don't see it here. Oh. Okay. And. Is that, uh, can somebody give me, are you able to see the king by himself on the screen right now? Yes. I know you can. Uh, are you able? Yes, we are. Okay. So let me play this and you can get an idea. Hopefully you can hear it. One time we went with Bishop Ruele in Bunyoro. We organized to go and meet a king, but I hadn't qualified to be a king yet. I hadn't become a king yet. We had to crawl on our knees to go and see the king. And we had to crawl backwards. But, high five. I now preach to them the gospel. Telling them Matthew 24, verse 14. That this kingdom. Yes, we are coming. We cannot fool you. We are not going to be fooled. I just say that it will be preached unto all the nations. Your Excellency, oh, it's you. When I knew you. Yeah, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background to that. Um, because you may not have been able to hear. Um, the king. Uh, prior, when I knew the king, you know, I saw the military come in, I saw the king come out, all of a sudden his military people take their positions with their machine guns, he gets taken, everybody stands, we get to the front row, and I'm going, wow, this is going back 12 years ago, uh, Cabego. Cabego says, when, when you come to Africa, you're going to have to know how to greet kings and the princes, that there's protocol. And he says, it's different with everyone. I have to tell you, this king just, just spoke and described one of the ways. He says, you're going to have to get on your knees. You're going to have to move on your knees. Then you're going to have to go backwards. He described it. Well, meanwhile, while he's up there speaking, I'm talking to other people because I know God's given me an opportunity to greet him. And I want to know what is it for this, his kingdom? What's the protocol? Nobody knew it. I, I mean, it's not like I had enough time to talk to everybody. I talked to two, and they said, I'm sorry, we don't know. So now I'm sitting down and listening to him, and I'm going, hey, God, would you show me what to do? He brings up a story that talks about what it was like when he wasn't a king and what he learned how to do, and you heard what he said. He says, we just high-fived each other. <laughs> well, now I'm up to do my greeting, and... Hopefully you can hear it. Okay, here it goes. I had to find somebody who could tell me what is the protocol in greeting the king. And, and 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 uh, and I'll tell you why. Years ago, somebody who escaped the Rwandan genocide. Prince Kibego from the DRC. Prince Kibego Kufa Ekong. 
uh, made it into Canada. Yagenda e Canada. Found me. Nasi Canada. And he told me. Nangaba. That. We need something beyond the colonial message. And he invited me to Africa. But he says, we start with the kings. We start with the chiefs and the princes of the different tribes. We need a tribal message. It has a gospel that's connected to Israel and the Jewish people. That reflects Jesus Christ as the king of the Jews. The king of Israel. But he, then he got on his knees. And he went backwards. And he went forward. He spun around. He did all these things that were very different for a Western mind. He told me, you have to learn how to meet the king. So the message would come into Africa. I only learned we're going to be here today. So I met with some of my brothers over there. I said, you know, what do I do? They weren't certain of all the protocols. So here, I was nervous. And I was prepared to do anything they would tell me. <laughs> they could have told me, stand on my head. Because for me, what's important is we manifest the wisdom of God before the heavenly realms. And we bring injustice, we, pardon me, we bring reconciliation to the injustices of what took place to a tribal people many years ago. And then you came up. And then you shared what the protocol is. No, come on now. Can I read what you have there? His Royal Highness. O H T one. King John Wahabi. Kabaka Yokana Wahabi. The King of Baweri. Kabaka Uwebuwe. Royal Kingdom. O Wa Kabaka O H T one. <laughs> and I want to present to you a special Magandavi. That connected us. Shield of David. Shield of David. It's made with Canadian maple wood. But with the Israeli olive tree. Olive wood and maple wood. And I'd like to give you this and thank you for welcoming us into your land. You are making it possible for us to work with God's people here in Africa. To help bring the Jewish people in the land. But more than that, there's scriptures, and I'd just like to read this to you. Say in Isaiah 49. It says, See, I will beckon to the Gentiles. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms. And carry your daughters on their shoulders. And then in verse 23. Which... I'm hearing as you, an interest in your heart 
As it relates to Israel, he goes on to say, Kings will be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Your Excellency, I believe you'll be part of that procession that will work with many other kings. Not only will they want to know the gospel, but they will want to know how to fulfill the holy word of God. Not for their own but so that nations would know that God keeps it and that together with Israel we will all know the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob we will all know the God of Israel we will all know the God who gave us his one and only begotten son his firstborn the king of the Jews Yeshua HaMashiach yes. Amen Amen We end up, uh, Carolyn sings over him. He, uh, you know, we pray over him. I, uh, I think. Gladness and joy, glory to the Lord. And, and then he ultimately gets done on his own. Prayed over him. I mean, it was just an amazing, and he stayed with us most of the day. He sat under my teaching. He got up and taught. Uh, again, it was just uh, one of those things where you just go, "Wow!" Uh, unplanned. Yeah, un <laughs> yeah. It was. We had this. This was our testimony all week long. Things that just weren't happening. Uh, there's our high five. Uh, uh, he's agreed to come to our work in Israel. In fact, I got an email from him yesterday uh, from his prime minister trying to work out the arrangements because he wants to open up Prayer Valley uh, at our work. So, I mean, listen, God, give God all the glory for an African safari adventure that is going beyond comprehension. What else happened? Okay. Uh, we started our, our time there at Entebbe, uh, meters away from where the hostage taking was in July 1976. They have set up a prayer altar there for the past 20 years. Full-time intercessors, a Christian aviation company. What are they called? You, maybe you can't see it up there because this thing is in the, the way. Eagle Air, your gateway into the heart of Africa. They call their altar uh, real both. Uh, anyway, just before leaving, um, we met with the owner. He came to the hotel. He was so excited to hear everything that's happening. We says we need to do a sing together in Entebbe in October of 2019, where uh, God inspired Marty for a word. They need to set up a memorial from Christians from all over Africa to mark the great miracle that took place in 1976 there and he agreed to it and he's going to host us there uh boy i'll tell you that's going to be an incredible event too so praise the lord so that took place uh um what else took what else happened um these are the extra things this this is going beyond the mandates uh, we were we you know we were taking our team uh to have one a uh, one minute's say before the rest of the team came 
uh, at Pastor Robert, who's in 890 days of revival at the Miracle Central Cathedral. By the way, what's the word for 219? Does everybody remember? 2019 is the year of miracles. It was a miracle that we would end up at this place. We had nothing but miracles take place all the all week long. We were going up for a, mi a minute, and he recognized Carolyn. His first trip to Israel was in the fall, and he went and had dinner at her place. Carolyn, what are you doing here? Next thing you know, she's teaching the team. Uh, we had to sing together, okay? Uh, Hebrew songs, they're changing. They're on the spot before... Uh, a viewing audience of a, that could be 149 million people, thousands out there. He invited us back. Uh, here we are. Uh, even Charissa spoke. Even Suzanne spoke. He gave us seeds, you know. And then our team here, excellence right here from uh, Cameroon, uh, Kenya, favor. We had favor and excellence on our team. And we had uh, Pastor... Um, McDonald there. So before we got up there to do another night uh, till one o'clock in the morning, I'm telling you, at, at midnight, I looked out and I asked the fellow, how many people are out there? He says, at least 3,000. At midnight, okay? It was so crazy. Uh, he had us for dinner twice while we were there, okay? And I mean, he's got all sorts of security. Near says to me, he says, he's got a lot of, he's got a small army around him. Anyway, uh, he's committing to be a part of this project, okay, in Israel. So, what, what, what's happening here? Let me tell you. Okay. Return Ministries Africa has got birthed, okay? Ugandans are assembling an African team to continue to lead the way for continental Africa to work together for Israel. This is huge. The Ugandans are saying this is too big just for our country. They already started mobilizing while we were there. For us to meet people, you know, and this is what uh, Pastor Laban said to me. He says, I can't believe people would meet and drop and change their schedules to meet you and Marty the way they did this week. Wow. He says, this doesn't happen. But they, everybody felt they had to do it because we got to mobilize things that are happening for 219. So the present initiatives that are happening right now is prayer and education in Africa, coordinating Sing Together conferences. I, I, I think I've got four or five coming up in just Africa this year, okay? Prayer and Education Israel. They're sending servant leaders to learn and serve at the Ark while establishing Prayer Valley in the Jordan Valley with a model of Prayer Mountain. And number three is Return and Restoration, preparing choirs to go to Canada and America to call the Children of Israel home and fundraise for Bakat Canary. Ammon told us, he says, I get it now. Not that he didn't get it, but he really got it after getting this choir up and going. Uh, and they did a marvelous job. Uh, he says, I'll get America going. I'll have another choir for you by August. Don't worry. It's done. And they'll be doing Hebrew to set, start setting the meetings up. Yeah. So that started. Um, so, yes, Israel and Africa united by prophetic um, things. They also decided that they're going to do this every year now. Okay, this is an annual event. 1919 was this year. I think next year will be 1920, 1921, until seven years from now when we get to 1925. And that day, Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria. Crazy. So we've got a seven-year plan happening right now in Africa. Uh, we can get excited about it. So in that day, there will be an altar to the Lord. That's what we established in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border, and it will be for a sign and for a witness to the wow. Lord of hosts, the land of Egypt. You're looking right here. That's Lake hey, Victoria. Th yeah. This is where the fountain is coming from, 90 meters below, and then it wow. runs this way to um, uh, Israel. To Israel. Um, oh, and, and if that wasn't enough, they, they had to take me to see the evangelist, Drake, who's doing these huge meetings. He was in, he couldn't be there because he was in Ethiopia. He says, Dean, I can't tell you. It was a sea as far as you can see of people there. But he uses his evangelism to bring the message of Israel in. He's been working with Christians for Israel after I resigned from there 
It was like homecoming week, okay? We got so excited. He's coming to Israel this February. We got different African pastors that are part of the African team right now that want to work together for what we're doing in Africa, coming to spend two and three weeks with us while we're there. Can you get excited about this? Pray for evangelist Drake Canabo. Uh, there he is. Uh, who are other parts of the team? Cameroon, excellence. Uh, Excellence Uso, uh, Pastor McDonald, uh, we already know from Kenya, Titus Keegan, of course, two of the uh, main keys in Uganda, Annie and Cosmos, uh, Dr. Miriam as well. Uh, and they mobilized the intercessors for um, Uganda team. I mean, they had everybody from taking toilet paper apart to setting up tents, making sure people had water and eating. Um, they worked tirelessly for us. But more than that, from it, it, we've got a leadership team, top people in the land. Uh, this is Intercessors for Uganda, Pastor Laban. He needed to see us before he left. Um, uh, I was told by Annie the greatest miracle was that as he humbled himself before us because they were given an opportunity to host this conference. They didn't think they had enough time. They needed to wait till April. But uh, Pastor Laban told us before we left the land, it's like the, the conference we should have normally had for January. God has spoken to me and he said, he put it on. And that's the con. He says, and the fact that he put it on and he used you to help facilitate that means that the agenda to what would have been spoken would have been different than I would have had. God knows best. Now we know what God's heart is in his desire. So he was very humble, precious man of God. He's helping us for the initiative. In fact, it's Francis who's the coordinator for intercessors for Uganda right here. As you can see, see how much hair they got up there on that eyebrow? Okay. He says to me, Dean, he says we got to work quickly. The intercessors, uh, the intercessors for Africa is on... March 18th, I says, I'm in York. I think I can come down for it. That's good. He says, I want you three days before the conference begins because we're going to bring this presentation for all of Africa. It's too good for just Uganda. So Francis uh, Nairo is leading the charge to take what is currently gaining momentum. I took him to meet Dr. John. Dr. John agreed to meet us again on short notice. And, mm -hmm. and he agreed. Prayer Mountain is an initiative that we got started in Uganda, but it's for all of Africa in, uh, in, in Israel. And so, uh, and then there's uh, Edward, who's intercessors for Israel over here. This is God's Fortress Church. The second time I spoke there, Pastor Godwell, he's pastoring this charge. So that we've got leadership, not only grassroots, which we're used to, but we've got strong leadership that are bringing structure to what we're doing in Africa. Um, you know, again, all we can say is praise the Lord. Africa, help let my people go out of America. Let's repent, sing, and bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. If you want to start that video, does he have it there, Sharissa? Thank you for doing that. Um, you can go ahead and uh, put it on there, Brother Joe, Pastor Joe. I'll stop sharing on my end. Uh, I've got a, another meeting with York that's, that, that's happening. Uh, again, keep these things in prayer. There's a connection between what God did with Constantine in 306 in York, uh, what England did to the Jews uh, in the Middle Ages, uh, to what's going on in Lord Reading and his lovely wife, Lady Melinda, are organizing and bringing me in on March 14th for... Uh, a big meeting in uh, in York, England. Uh, please keep that in prayer. And go ahead, Joel. Okay, I think I'm going to play. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Did it go? It doesn't go up on your screen, though, does it? Or is it? Yes, it does. Okay. Here we go.
Please pray for Africa uh, in their role in bringing 6 million Jews home. It's an act of redemption. God has been waiting to bring them, not with a colonial message to America, but to bring them with a message that's connected to Israel and the Jewish people and an invite to bring the Jewish people home. Uh, and I have to tell you, some Africans have got it. This was a book given to me by a lady written in 2009. She says, please read this book. This is the message you preach. Wow. Uh, and... Uh, course to hear this david sapiria uh the prophetic implications of historical geographical and divine connections dr laban he's put a book here on how uh, african communities can have a kibbutzim look and it's going to change africa it's there, there's stuff happening in africa that's connected to what god's doing in israel that's going to transform Africa bringing their wealth into Israel and really all the earth will see it as it says in chapter 18 of, uh, of um, yeah. Isaiah. So anyway, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. I'm hoping things will continue from Joe's computer because I've got another meeting I got to get to. Uh, God bless you. Who, Joe, are you taking over now, buddy? Oh, in this room. So, Sharisa, do you want to just work for my computer, Sharisa? I can? Okay. So, we'll reconnect you here. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> okay, before I begin, um, I'm just going to allow Suzanne Kulp to share a few words. I've been blessed to travel with Suzanne to Jinja and Uganda, and it was really such a blessing. So, before I share my slides, I'll let Suzanne speak. Well, looking back, the whole thing is just overwhelming. Um, I think Dean summarized it beautifully. I don't understand why uh, God sent me there, but I know that he did, and I believe that his purposes will unfold as the days go on. I'm excited that Africa is going to be blessed because of their, um, their relationship with Israel how it's being restored and because of uh, the restoration of their relationship with Israel, their wealth will be, will, will come. It will, the country will prosper. Mm -hmm. It's going to make a huge difference for them. And I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, when Dean started talking about <laughs> the Africa Israel connection last summer, I, I thought, okay, now this is like, I don't really get it at all. 
But, um, and then when he said they were all going to Jinja for the conference, there was nothing in me that wanted to go at all. I do not want to go. I'm just like, not, not interested. But then God spoke to me in early December and said, get ready. <laughs> oh no. But I said, okay, I'll go. And thankfully, Sharissa was willing to go with me. And I am so, so grateful that she came. She was, she was my traveling buddy, my partner. I could share with her mm -hmm. things that I didn't with anybody else. And it was, uh, it was an amazing trip. I saw things that I'd never seen before. The poverty in Africa is incredible. The people were so warm, warm, loving, and the way they love the Lord is, is, is amazing. And it's inspiring, very inspiring. I don't know what God has for me in this project, but in the future, but I'm available, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. Okay, go ahead, Teresa. Well, it's good to be back. Um, the days were packed. The nights were very short. Yeah. But uh, I'm very thankful for God's grace. Uh, there was only maybe one day where I was feeling pretty tired. But uh, other than that, it was very good. I woke up yesterday morning around... 4 a.m. just feeling like the entire trip was a dream yeah. and then I woke up to messages from friends that I have connected there with words of uh, just kind words of love and I just began to weep because mm -hmm. it, it was a dream that just was reality and uh, I feel now that I went to Africa I've always had a heart to go there but to be able to go to Africa and have a message of Israel involved is pretty special, especially with all the training that God has given me the last seven years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a greater fullness uh, that we're walking in. Uh, it's exciting. And like Suzanne said, we just need to be willing and obedient to God's call. So this is one of the sunset pictures here. Uh, we went. We were blessed to go on a two-day safari, and so I just put a few pictures together for you. Uh, the earth is the Lord, and its fullness, the world, and those who dwell therein. That's including all the animals. Uh, the baboon you see here uh, was, he wasn't, uh, he, anyway, he got very close. We went on the safari, we went for lunch, and he was behind me and I said, oh, he's nice, took a picture. <laughs> and uh, we had our meal and then he was coming closer and my back was behind me and then he was getting closer. And Carolyn Hyde was like, oh my goodness, he's starting to show his teeth. And I slowly got up and I started to walk away and he came in really quickly and he grabbed my hamburger bun. <laughs> And he zoomed away and Karen screamed and I was like, that was really scary, <laughs> you know, and thankfully he didn't attack us. Um, afterwards, one of the guys from the restaurant was there kind of watching over us. I went on the other side of the table and thankfully he didn't come near us again. But that was my experience with the baboon and uh, I hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> So here's just a few pictures while we were on the safari. Carolyn Hyde was just really praying that we would see a lion. And sure enough, we did. Mm -hmm. um, Annie afterwards said it's very rare that we would no. see a lion. And so God answers prayers. Uh, for we are God's handiwork, Ephesians 2.10. Oh. The children of Africa are so beautiful. And... Uh, I was really thankful to have the opportunity to get to know them a little bit. First interview. Uh, yeah, sure. So that you, that's what we see over there. Oh, that's what you, what do you see? What do you see? Just put, take it off the presenter view, just so that you, know, you, you, you want it. 
Okay, sorry, just one second here. You want it on presenter, but without the, um, you know, the, the double. Oh. Just uh, the full thing, what you see. Okay, how do I do that? I don't know how you do it on there. Sorry, just give me a minute. I'll just continue to do it then. No, no, it's okay. Uh, oh, hold on. When I say presenter view, I mean um, I can take this part up. But, oh, I see. Uh, where you're not seeing two screens, you're just seeing what's up there. Oh, I don't know how to. <clears throat> I don't know if I could know how to do that because. Okay, well then just go ahead and do it. Okay, I'll try to figure it out here. Um, just could go back the way you were. They just see both. They see what you're coming and they see what's on. Okay. I'll, what about you know, what I if I do this? Edit it out. Okay. Can you just see that? Can you see that? Uh, maybe go see what. Oh, they're seeing the slides on the side. They're yeah. seeing yeah the slides on the slide. Yeah, that's called uh, presenter view. Um, um, instead of just slideshow. Yeah. This is what they're seeing. Yeah, they see, they see this. Okay. Um, I don't think it's okay. Just just okay. They they can <clears throat> see both. Okay. Well, you you guys get to see the first and after slide, but the ones here it'll remain a surprise. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Um, so just about the children, I learned a new word when I was there. The word is mizungo. It, my friend taught me this word. It means white meat. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a mizungo. So I am a mizungo. mizungo. I, I went for a walk uh, close to the Nile and there was a little boy named Moses. He's about five, six years old. And he just came up to me and he said, Mizungo! <laughs> and then he gave me a high five and thankfully I knew what it meant. And so there was another situation where we were at the bottom. I met a friend and we were at the bottom of the hill. And the next day she came up to me and she, she found me. And I was like, hey, how did you find me out of all these people? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that also, uh, for those who know me, uh, I get words from Dr. Seuss a lot, and there was this one that came to me while I was there, and it said, uh, why are you trying to fit in when you're made to stand out? Well, when I'm with a bunch of Africans, I definitely stand out. <laughs> so, um, Imagine being with Moses by the Nile. Yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing to be uh, near the river, river Nile. So we were there to bless Israel. The Africans have such a beautiful heart. Um, heart of worship. Um, there was a call out to repent on behalf of uh, what the Africans have done to enslave the Jewish people back in uh, the Bible in Egypt. And they're still crying out to God on this behalf. And I remember one time I was watching this conference about Canada and just the repentance about how we've treated the, the, the uh, Indian people or the Aboriginals. And I asked the Lord and I said, God, I, I feel like we're always repenting on the same thing. You know, why do we keep asking you for forgiveness? And then while I was watching this, a lady came up on the stage and the timing was perfect. And she said, well, some of you might be wondering why we're repenting over and over again. And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> and then she said, we do it until God says it is done. Amen. Amen. And so uh, it was really such an honor to be there, to cry out to God on behalf of the uh, African people. And, you know, we will see a day where there will be restoration. It's happening. It's very exciting. Um, but their hearts are so pure. And, you know, there's, I've heard over and over again that there's so much corruption happening in Africa, the government. And so we're really praying for God to restore the government, uh, for a righteous government in Africa but uh, you know they don't they don't mess around God is calling them to stand with Israel to cry out in the worship and their prayer life it's been such an example to me uh, you know days after a terror attack in Kenya where 21 people died there were people on the streets just worshiping God 
And when I saw this video, I thought, wow, how beautiful. But at the same time, my heart ached because I thought, God, I want to see North America cry out to you like this. So here is the Sing Together One voice that Dean was talking to you about. Um, mm -hmm. I was blessed to meet the children while I was there. Um, the, the man standing at the front of the uh, picture there, his name is Livingston. He's very, very excited. Uh, all the children were very, very he's excited serious. to come. So he's here uh, with Joy and the children in Canada. They're here till July. They're very excited to be in the snow. It's a lot colder there. And Livingston actually asked me, so when does your warmer weather come? And I said, around April. He's like, wow, <laughs> that's a long time. But, you know, it's really just so wonderful. They're going to be really loved on and they'll feel the warmth of people. Uh, so thank, thanking God for the uh, dream that again is becoming a reality. And then this is us at the airport. Uh, okay. We were so close to being on the same flight, but uh, we were about 15 minutes apart. So divine connections, like Dean said earlier, um, I believe that this is truly going to be a year of miracles, but the word I received was this is going to be a year of favor. Mm -hmm. And God brought a man named Favor mm -hmm. uh, to be with us. And so that was really special. Uh, the lady with the, in the red shirt, her name is Grace, and she's in charge of all the worship that took place. And uh, the girl in the middle with the uh, square dress, she just felt... When they introduced you on stage, we really just wanted, <laughs> I really wanted to connect with you. I also have a heart for uh, generations and young people and stuff like that. And then there's two men on the corner right. And he said, I want you to come and speak at my church. So I've had a few invitations to go back and speak. <laughs> so God willing, if it's his will for me to go and it's perfect timing, I will. Yeah. So here's some more connections. Uh, Karen uh, was with us. Um, Pastor McDonald on the right corner there. He, him and I were able to share at a church together. Uh, he brought the main message and I was able to share for about 20 minutes uh, to the young people. And he just brought this very uh, now word uh, about standing with Israel and uh, the importance of just loving God, sitting with Israel. And he also went into uh, some of the sins of Africa. And there was just, it was very, there was a weight, but it was very powerful. And we saw many people were set free in our meeting. And that's the Nile up above there. Yes, and that is the Nile up above. That's me with Dr. Ruth Brooks, who comes here every once in a while with her husband. Yeah, I was. And then on the bottom left, there is a man by the name of Excellence. <coughs> um, so, does it ever move like that all the time? Yes, it is. Or was it just the part of the part of the That's where the waterfall is. Yeah. So it's always like that, but it's more, it's calm okay. uh, near the bottom. Yeah. Very calm. So we're thankful for Russ, who was taking pictures and he almost fell in, what? but favor. Uh, grabbed him and he he's okay <laughs> thank god so uh russ had god's favor literally yeah. and god saw that it was good mm. so this is the sunrise at the safari and then the sunset mm. by the nile and then this is the nile on the bottom and just to think that one day uh long ago the whole nile was blood yeah you know during one of the plagues and yeah. but you know God is doing really wonderful things and it's excited to be part of it and I just look forward to whatever God has in store so with that I will close mm -hmm. Pastor Joe do you have anything or I'll just close in prayer and if anyone else has a prayer on their heart uh, please be feel free to share so father thank you so much for everything that you're doing God, it's amazing that you want to partner with us to do all these things. Father, we continue to cry out for a righteous government in Africa. Lord, we even lift up America and Canada to you right now. 
God, we just thank you in advance for all the good things you're going to do in our government. Father, we are so thankful that we were able to spend time with our African brothers and sisters, Lord, and Jinja, Lord, and shine our light. Thank you that we were able to sing together, God, and that this is just a seed of what you're doing, Lord. So God, I just lift up Dean to you with everything that he, he's doing, God and the family. Just be with all with them, God, in this time. Lord, be with the children, the One Voice Choir, Lord, as they get over jet lag. And uh, just be with them in every single meeting, Father. Uh, the one thing that really blessed me was uh, Aman, one of the leaders of the choir. He said, you know, a lot of people, they want to come. They want African children choirs to come to their church. And we, and we were sent out to receive money. He said, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to just go and thank the people and bless the people. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty special. Yeah. Stop share and then it'll show you the screen. It'll show you stop share. Is it stop share? Yeah, I stopped it. Okay. Uh, you should be on there. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we want to thank uh, those that went mm -hmm. and those that sent, mm -hmm. and um, and this message is building and building and building, and so um, this uh, broadcast that that uh, a few of you have watched that have plugged in this morning will be put up on our website very shortly, and uh, w could I ask that that you would um, forward it to all of your contacts because we really need uh, the prayer support. This is a huge undertaking, six months on the road with seven children and, and their team. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, Christopher and Abigail Spark that are going to be their chaperones. Abigail is still in, in uh, England looking after a daughter that's just had a, a serious um, uh, operation but is doing well. And so there's, uh, you know, lots of, we need a driver. We need someone who's used to driving in the Canadian winters that would come on stream with us for uh, probably February, March and uh, be available to drive. A, a woman would be preferable because she could then be part of the chaperoning. Um, but if you know of anybody that would be willing to do this, um, we would supply them with their, their billets every night and their food. Uh, but they would be driving with the children and loving on the children and being part of the, the meeting. So be in touch with us for that. And if you can, come tomorrow night at our Arab Shabbat meeting where uh, Dean and, and uh, this team of Sharisa and, and uh, Suzanne will share again. Mm -hmm. So God bless you all. Uh, let's gather and uh, we won't turn the, the broadcast off because we've heard that people love to pray the, the Lord's Prayer with us. And we just want to thank Art and Debbie Hammond for being on, for Danielle in Montreal, God bless you, for Deborah, and for um, Karen Barber, Dean's sister in Winnipeg, um, for Lily Fletcher, Fletcher up in Northern Ontario, and for Sherry Balzer. Listen, really sad over there. Can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Sharice, smile. My smile. Suzanne, smile. <laughs> okay. Keep the smile on your face, okay? Thank <laughs> so thank you all. Now let's um, join together and, uh, and just thank the Lord for uh, this. I'm just going to sit so they won't see her. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Together. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you all. God bless you, and we'll see you again next Thursday.